going to review all my cold creams. I've been using them for about two months now, on and off. I had some concerted weeks of using only one sort, and then I've just been mixing and matching after that, so I can sort of compare them. Historically, cold cream was more than just a moisturiser. It acted as a primer and a binding for face powder in the Victorian and Edwardian era, and also acted as a sort of cleanser and makeup remover later in the 20th century, um, and it still, is, still can be used like that now. I have used mine historically with historical face powder, and also with putting on my skin before on the very rare occasions that I wear makeup, and it does work for that. And it also works as a general moisturiser, which is what I quite like, because I have quite dry skin. But it doesn't... The, 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 the different cold creams that I've made don't behave quite like a modern moisturiser. They're not quite absorbent. They leave quite an oily residue on your skin, which is what I quite like about them, but I completely understand if that was something other people don't like. So I'll try and give you a little review of each one that I've made and, and a tiny demonstration of how I use it. And again, I want to make it very clear, this is personal, this is what I do, it brings me some sort of, you know, strange pleasure to make my own my own cold cream and use it. It might not be the best thing for my skin, but it's not really doing it any harm either. But I'm not doing this because I think other people should do this. I'm doing this because I find the making of it quite fun and the using of it quite fun. And I've never really discovered a moisturiser that you could buy that has made me think, oh, this is the only thing I'll ever use for the rest of my life. So they haven't been any sort of real disadvantages. Some have come out better consistencies than other, and some of that's the ingredients, some of that's the preparation, and sort of the different oils have different properties on your skin, and some are better than others. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk through them now. So the cold creams that you saw me make in the previous video was this one here, uh, from a recipe from 1909, with almond oil, rose water, a little bit of jojoba oil and beeswax. And this one here, which was the same uh, initial properties, almond oil, rose water, beeswax, jojoba oil and also cocoa butter. Um, the two here, the two at the back here, you didn't see me make but they were made using much the same methods. This one is olive oil rather than almond oil and this one here was coconut oil rather than almond oil, but they still both had the beeswax and distilled water or rose water um, properties as well. And you can see they're all varying shades of cream. If I'd used a bleach beeswax, they would be a paler consistency. Um, so that's a sort of variation depending on what ingredient you use. They're all a similar consistency. So you can see the rose water, the rose water and almond oil is quite granular. And when I put it on, I put it on my hand, you know, it leaves quite a, a oily, waxy residue. And it sort of sits on your face, absorbing into the skin a little bit, but not as much as maybe a modern, modern moisturiser. You, you sort of feel oil on your skin if you touch your face after you've put it on, and that sort of fades over the day. And if you put a face powder or makeup over the top, then of course you're not going to notice that. But I don't wear makeup on a daily basis, so I am aware of the oil, the sort of oily residue on your face. Cold cream number two with the cocoa butter. Um, it's, it's equally got quite a, a shiny, glossy, glossy look. And it definitely sits on the skin with a sort of residue, but it absorbs a little bit quicker, and I'm assuming that's partly the different quantities and the sort of cocoa butter. Um, so this one behaves more like a modern moisturiser, but still leaves sort of quite a, quite a heavy, a heavy presence on the skin. And again, as I said before, I rather like that. It absorbs reasonably. Um, and you know, fairly quickly, you're not going to notice that you've got the sort of residue of it on your skin. So it absorbs quicker than the, the almond oil and rose water one. Unsurprisingly, considering its use in history, the olive oil, the olive oil based cold cream was definitely the quickest absorbing, um, left the least greasy sort of layer on the skin, absorbed really well. And yeah, 
and unsurprising really because putting olive oil on your skin is what many people recommend doing if they have nothing else as part of their skincare regime it's sort of used all over the world and this is from the Galen's recipe of cold cream so though you didn't see me making this um, I'll, I'll post a link to it um, yeah this one worked really really well I like the properties of it and that surprised me because I'm quite put off by olive oil in um, cosmetics and products other than soap well partly because of those sort of solid green olive oil soaps you can buy in health food shops that go really really slimy but actually it didn't go slimy it behaved really well to my great disappointment the coconut oil based cold cream which i had high hopes for and admittedly made up my own recipe um this one is too much like just putting plain uh, coconut oil on your skin which is something I quite like I am um, if I don't have any moisturizer I do just put coconut oil on my skin and I really like that I know there are some people that you know know more about skin who would definitely recommend not doing that because it's not got the the best absorption rate and it can cause your skin to get sort of quite clogged and blocked um, and actually get, make you become sort of spotty um, but then again there are other people that love using coconut oil for makeup remover so maybe if you wanted to use your cold cream only for removing your makeup then I'd recommend this one but I tested this one really thoroughly and I don't know whether it was just you know time of the month um, I had really spotty skin after using this for two weeks so it's probably a combination of things partly the, the the coconut oil based cold cream partly diet partly time of the month but this was the one I noticed that had the uh, most negative effect on my skin compared to the other three and I was sort of disappointed in them. None of them do the absolute comedy sort of you know cold cream on the face I keep thinking of Lucille Ball for some reason though I don't know why it's sort of thing where the the wife especially in the sort of 40s and 50s comes out of the bedroom covered in cold cream with a hairnet um, none of the creams are heavy enough to leave that sort of white deposit all over the skin they all sort of do absorb um, so maybe the sort of a more maybe a more modern recipe is required to achieve that effect you'll have to do some experimentation of your own and maybe i will when i made the cocoa butter and cold cream before that one did leave quite a heavy white deposit on the skin but that was also the one that went moldy so there was clearly something not right on that one as for keeping these products as you can see i've got them in a mixture of open jars and sealable jars these will should all keep for a couple of months obviously there are no preservatives in them other than the beeswax and oil and if you don't let them get water and bacteria into them there is no reason why they shouldn't keep indefinitely the coconut oil one um, melts a lot like coconut oil does so I had some incidents with that so you definitely want to keep that in a more sealed jar if you're using it the rest of them only melt under extremely high temperatures and so have been quite well behaved over the very hot weather but unless they sort of any develop any mold i'd be happy to carry on using these for the rest of the year and possibly longer but again i don't want to i don't want to make anybody do anything they don't want to do and if that idea of that horrifies you then obviously don't do it make a small quantity and dispose of it when you feel that it's old or you've had enough of it yeah that's that's my recommendation really now to talk a little bit more about using the cold cream don't be fooled by the fact my pot says shaving cream in here is actually my attempt making Victorian face powder. I found the recipe online and it's very similar to 18th century hair powder actually. So it's made of starch, I used um, cornstarch and arrowroot powder and rice powder and then the pink colouring comes from red ochre and then I used a couple of drops of scent to give it a really heady smell that I imagine the Victorians would have been very keen on. As I think I've said before, I don't really like heavily scented stuff and this shade of pink really, really doesn't suit my complexion. There are pages and pages devoted to getting the right shades of, shades of face powder for Victorian Edwardian ladies, but with my not being overly keen on wearing makeup, this seems, this seems un unnecessary thing for me to go to. I was just curious, so therefore you know I had all the ingredients left over from making hair powder why not make some face powder to go with the cold cream I've been making unless you apply a very heavy dose of cold cream to your face this powder just sits on your skin and is very likely to cause breakouts and spots because it clogs your pores so again I wouldn't really recommend this 
but it makes me laugh that I gave it a go and I obviously made quite a large amount of it and it's and it's sat here for some years now with its heady heady smell it really really doesn't suit me it would be great it'd be the ideal skin color I would like to have because really I want to be a goth but I'm far too rosy and healthy for that um you would then also probably follow this with some heavy duty blusher but again because I have quite a ruddy complexion I I don't really wear blusher because I feel my cheeks are doing doing the red on their own quite well at the best of times. In fact, I think I want to sort of dull, dull my cheeks down. And there you can see comedy, comedy Victorian face powder that doesn't suit me. Uh, <laughs> looks awful against my teeth, obviously, because they're really yellow. Um, and it's not my complexion. And I find that it tends to sort of crease up in your eyes and around your nose and around your mouth because it's not as fine as modern makeup. Um, so yeah, I don't think even with different pigments or uh, colouring, I'm going to further experiment with Victorian face powder. I don't think it's very good for my skin and I don't like the effects of it, but, but there you are. Cold cream can be used to glue glue the face powder to your skin and remove it afterwards as well. Far more successful than face powder was my experimenting with making my own lip tint. So this is made with almond oil coloured with alkanet, which I think I mentioned in my infused oil video, cocoa butter and red ochre. And um, this makes quite a good paste that I just apply onto my lips with my fingers. So I've still got the ghostly white powder on. But moisturising, lip staining, natural, and I'm much more successful than the face powder. I think there's some beeswax in there as well. I don't think I followed a recipe. I think I just mixed it up and got the consistency I want. I did make some poured into little plastic tubes, like a lipstick, but again, because they're plastic and you can only use them so many times and wash them out, I now keep it in a little pot. And so, again, I only really wear it when... I'm at home. That's not really a, a great travel one. Although I did take it to the ball in Bath earlier this year because like, well, I'm only going to wear my 19th century inspired makeup. So I took my little little pot of rouge, little pot of lip stain with me. If you wanted to use your cold cream in a sort of more 20th century way, you could use it for removing makeup. I know it doesn't look like it, but I've got mascara, face powder and lipstick on now. Well, you can see the lipstick. Um, and I'm going to use the cold cream to take my makeup off now. Um, a couple of years ago I made myself washable makeup remover wipes, um, I crocheted them, it's the only crochet I can do really along with dishcloths. I found red ones were quite good for red lipstick otherwise if you made them all sort of pale colours the red lipstick stains them. I thought this was an absolutely marvellous idea, I'm so pleased with myself but I find them a bit faffy to be honest and it means I just wear even less makeup because I find using them and washing them a bit of a pain but it's one of the things that I've chosen to do rather than have, you know, easy to use makeup wipes. Yeah, you can use the, these, the cold cream and these to remove makeup. and that is my makeup gone and I'll go and wash my face and then possibly put some more cold cream back on depending on whether you want to then sort of you know moisturize after taking your makeup off. So there's the historical and modern uses for cold cream that I use and enjoy. Um, I hope this was helpful. Any questions below please doing. I'm sure it's not the best thing for my skin. I feel like it's really going to horrify Americans who take skincare much more seriously than us British, you know, we're still going outside and burning and going red. Um, but yeah, that's that's my review of cold creams. I hope it was helpful. Um, I'm not sure about informative, but fun maybe. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>